let's do an example of GPA because GPA is an example of weighted averages you're going to see for the next three, four years, maybe even more. So it's good to know how to calculate your GPA. So let's suppose that they, these were your classes. You took these five classes this semester. This is the number of units that each class is worth. That's important. We need that information. It basically determines the weight of each class, like the difficulty, right? The weight. And this is the grade that you got for each of those classes. Now, as a reminder, in case you don't remember, um, this is what each letter grade represents in terms of grade point averages. So if you have an A, an A equates to a 4.0, a B equates to a 3.0, a C is a 2.0, a D is a 1.0. If you failed, if you withdrew unofficially, if you withdrew officially, anything like that, that's a zero. We want to figure out what your GPA is for the end of the semester. So what we're going to do is notice that none of these grades are lower than a C. You did a pretty good job. So I'm going to take this score right here, this information from this box, and I'm going to put it up here so that we don't forget so that we just have some space to like put out all this information. So here it is up here in red. Um, and then we're also taking the weight here in blue, right? Kind of calculates the difficulty of each of the classes. Again, it doesn't make sense for the classes that are more difficult to be the same, to be weighted the same as the classes that are easy, right? Like your dance classes, your kinesiology classes should not be at the same level. If they're not the same level of difficulty at your, as your math classes. So doing well in a math class should mean more than, you know, like a one unit class, right? The weight is very important. That's why that's what units mean. So I'm going to take this information and I'm going to do this fraction right here. So what does that mean? I am taking this, this first part represents what's happening in math 104. So the blue represents the weight. It's the three units from the weight here. That's why I color coordinated. And you got a B. And so a B equates to three points. So here's your three points. And then I did that again. We did that with English. So here's English and here's going, what's going on with English. So that's the entire numerator there. And in the denominator, we just added all of the uh, units that you took this semester. So then I have, so here are the colors. Here's your GPA points for each of your classes. Um, so you got nine GPA points for math. You got nine GPA points for English. You got six GPA points for anthropology, four for, kine yeah, four for kinesiology and another four for kinesiology. And then we also took the denominator. We said we, you took 11 total units this semester. And so then that means you have a total, I just added up the numerators. You have a total of 32 GPA points divided by 11 units that you took this semester. That's how your GPA gets calculated. So now let's say, for example, you're like, hey, well, Leslie, I didn't know that 32 divided by 11 was 2.91. How am I supposed to answer a question like this on an exam? Good question. You don't know what 32 divided by 11 is. I mean, it's, it's a little too hard to do that. That's fine. We could do kind of what we did in P2 and we could look at a number line. So here's a number line. Here is a 2.0, here is a 3.0, and you know you're somewhere like around here, right? Maybe for the exam, I give you a number line that goes from zero to four, right? Because you have either a zero GPA or a 4.0 GPA and you have something in between. So a 32 over 11 might be hard to calculate, but I can round my 32 over 11 to 33 over 11. That's easy to calculate, that's a three. And then now we're just gonna do what we did last time for P2 and we're gonna say, hey, is that an overestimate or an underestimate? Well, I made my numerator bigger. So that means that this number over here, this is an overestimate. So 3.0 was a little too big, not by a lot because I only changed it by one number, but it is a little too big. That means your GPA is somewhere in this block right here. This would be your answer. You can get a better guess. You can even say, hey, it's probably somewhere around here because I barely, barely overestimated it. But you know, it's not quite a 3.0. 3.0 is too much, but it's just under a 3.0. So that's how you can calculate that. How else is weighted average important? Um, you can also be important when making decisions. Let's say you're trying to buy a house and you have three different houses. You have a house in Los Altos, you have a house in El Dorado Park, and you have a house in downtown Long Beach. And so you're trying to figure out which of these three houses you should buy. Now we're going to assume that not every single one of these houses is perfect because you're never going to find a perfect house, but you are really torn between the three of them and you're not sure which one's the best option. Well, what you can do is you can say, I, I, the three things that I value the most are the location of the house, because that's very important, the size of the house, you know, how many square feet of house you have, and then perhaps like the space, like entire square footage of the entire lot, like backyard, front yard included, all that stuff. How's your parking? All of that stuff. So you can say, okay, well, how important is each of these things to me? 
um, and you can do something like this. Um, let's say location is 40% important for you, like out of 100, and then size is 35% and space is 25%. That has to add up to 100%. Um, so you're basically, what you're doing is you're ranking your three important things as most important to least important and by how much. And then what you can do is you can score each of these houses as if you're giving them grades um, for each of the things that they have. So you can say things like, hey, this Los Altos house, um, the location has an A, the size has a C, and the interior has a C. So maybe it's like in a really nice neighborhood, a really, really safe place, but it's kind of a small house. You have one in El Dorado Park. Maybe it's not like the best location. It's not horrible either. Um, it's really big because it's really, you know, it's really spacious. Um, but maybe the interior is not um, in really pristine condition. And then you have downtown where, I mean, it's great because you're next to everything, but it's a teeny tiny little place. You basically have an apartment um, and maybe the interior is like really modern and really nice. And you can take this information um, plus the weights from all of these three categories and you can basically calculate like a GPA for it. You can give it a weighted score. And so the Los Altos house has a 2.8, the downtown, or sorry, the El Dorado Park one has a 3.0 and the downtown one has a 2.7. Then just based off of numbers, based off of like calculations like this, um, what should you go with? What seems to be the best option here? The one in El Dorado Park seems to be the best option. And then the one in Los Altos and then the one downtown, like downtown seems to be like in last place. And so then, you know, of course you want to still go with your gut and stuff like that, but this kind of puts things into perspective to say, hey, well, I have things that are important to me. Some things are more important than others. Like how, how do I pick which one to do? Well, I guess you could still do it if you're going to go to grad school and you're trying to figure out what schools you should go to if you have a bunch of acceptance letters. Um, you can rank your different schools. Um, based off of something similar to this. And then that way you can make a choice. You can make a decision on uh, what school you should go to. 